First, quickly explain a, a recap of what the Viva connection is all about and, and how it actually works and what are the extensibility options and then uh, and what is the bot powered ACS all about. So why are we introducing this option versus the SharePoint framework powered ACS option and what you can do with this. And then Alex is going to do the live demo on how that works in practice within the Viva connection. Now the Viva connection is the, the employee experiences, daily employee experiences uh, designed really for frontline and desktop workers frontline workers and desktop workers. So depending on which device you're using, the Viva connection adapts on the device and it's really targeted for corporate communication. So you can easily access your day-to-day -day applications and apps and tools uh, regardless of the device what you're using. You can access easily your company resources and all of this can be personalized. So you can, you can build your own dashboards based on the role, based on the user, based on the organization uh, where people are. Uh, so that's kind of the, the main idea of the Viva connection. As I said, it actually have three different shapes, so to say. So it has the desktop experiences, it has the tablet experiences and mobile. We are right now in progress of rolling out uh, the V3 version of the desktop experiences. So there are certain changes related on these pictures. So it's not precisely like it is in here, but it's, it's pretty much still in here. And all of this is extensible. So if you're an ISV or a partner or a customer, you can design your own cards and extensibility in here from where you can redirect the user, for example, to all of the common applications, your, let's say, your, uh, uh, your, what is sell, uh, salary reports, your latest news, your whatever is the relevant for the for the employee. And really the key point here is that this is really targeted for across the devices. So if you have frontline workers, for example, in the, in the transport, uh, for example, let's say bus drivers or a, a nurses in hospital, they don't sit in the front of the desktop, um, but they can still be connected to your company using the mobile experiences and stay up to date and access the relevant tools and resources what your company is providing providing to the different experiences what we're uh, having here. Now, what I wanted to also quickly kind of a recap is common use cases that customers and partners are building. So of course, for employee tools and apps, um, classical examples will be based up and benefits. For example, in Microsoft, I can go and double check my based up details using the Viva connection within the Microsoft uh, own Viva connection installation. IT supports time of request, travel and expenses, uh, weather and stock vesting information, data insights and analytics and well-being and wellness. So having a one location where the employee tools and HR access information is available. Frontline workers, shift management, task sign off, approvals, time management, on-site virtual appointments, inventory overviews, all of that stuff can be easy, uh, can be really considered as a great examples for frontline worker scenarios which are accessed then using the mobile UI. All of the career growth, learning and development, work anniversaries, birthdays, all of that stuff, typical examples as well, what people are using within their Viva Connection dashboard. So as you are, for example, commuting to your work, you can just quickly open up the Microsoft Teams and then access the Viva Connection dashboard and get access on the relevant information directly within your mobile phone uh, as, a, as an example scenario. And of course, communication and engage, big part of this is corporate communications, making sure that your employees can easily access the relevant company news and announcements uh, depending on their role and depending on their organization. So everything can be personalized as well. And of course, this integrates with the, with the messaging uh, and notifications within the Microsoft of teams so whenever there's news announcements or if that's happening you will get employees will get notified on that as well now viva connection does provide uh, different uh, extensibility options um, uh, which we're kind of covering here the main two different main options is either using the sharepoint framework uh, which is uh, a web stack development tooling for build extensibility extensibility for Microsoft 365 um, and you built uh, ACs as in adaptive card extensions using the SharePoint framework and from those ACs you can then deep link to the teams. Now some of our partners however were saying that well we do have already bot framework powered bots in the Microsoft Teams and as Viva connection cards are actually adaptive cards. Why couldn't we use bot framework uh, to actually provide those adaptive card experiences within the Viva connection? And that's what the bot framework part is, is all about. So for those 
partners who already have Microsoft Teams extensibility built using the Microsoft Teams bot framework, their existing investments, they can actually now extend those bot framework elements to power Viva Connection experiences as well. So, and that bot framework installation can be extended with additional things, which Alex is going to show, um, then to feed or uh, or response the, the dashboard at uh, those experiences. And that's actually really, really cool. So you can use your existing investments, depending on which side you're coming. If you're coming from SharePoint framework side, same tooling, same extensibility, which works in Teams, SharePoint, Outlook, and Microsoft 365 can be used for Viva Connection. If you have already existing investments in the Microsoft Teams in the in the form of Pot Power Pot uh, Framework, you can extend that to also be part of the Viva Connection experience. Underneath, of course, we are accessing Microsoft Graph APIs. All of that, uh, like typically within the Microsoft uh, 365. So as said, uh, really the idea here is that if you have an existing bot, uh, bot framework powered experience as a chat within the Microsoft Teams, now the same bot can be extended to actually feed those cards and quick views and react on end user operations directly within the Viva Connection dashboard um, in the desktop or in a mobile or in a tablet experiences. But to show this in practice, let's actually move into Alex's uh, screen. Alex has prepared us a demo to how to uh, get started on implementing both powered uh, Viva Connection experiences and how they work in practice. And we can Thank see Alex's you. screen and all is fine. Awesome. Excellent. Awesome. Yeah, so uh, yeah, I'll show the uh, quick demo, which is like dev demo, so no actual like use case or scenario, but still. So here I'm on the uh, dashboard and um, let's actually add a new bot is here just to show you that everything is working like like expected, like with the SharePoint framework cases. So I have a bot is in here. Hopefully it's working and the uh, Azure site is uh, on. So. As usual, I'm just adding the uh, ASIN here to my dashboard. Uh, all the operations that you are expecting are working fine and powered by the bot instead of uh, SharePoint framework code. So I can change the some properties for my card, like uh, community demo, uh, some primary text. I click apply, all the information goes to the bot, the bot re uh, replies back that, hey, everything is fine, let's apply these um, properties. If I publish it, uh, you can see it, like you can use quick views, uh, you can use actions where you have like new features in your uh, cart, and uh, I'll show you in the code how it's done, but basically, same as for any SharePoint framework card, you have the same functionality basically, but that is powered by the bot. So uh, how is it done from technical perspective? First of all, right now uh, to make it happen, you should as always upload the uh, solution to your SharePoint app catalog. And uh, actually this is not a SharePoint framework solution, it's a team solution. So it's a zip archive that you usually can upload to the Teams, and because of that, it's much uh, easier for uh, existing uh, kind of developer SISVs who already have uh, bots and Teams. It's basically the same package that you can apply, uh, deploy to the uh, SharePoint app catalog. Same for the uh, bot registration. So as usual, the bot is registered uh, as a bot service in the in the Azure. The only change you should do to uh, make uh, your bot work in uh, Viva Connections, you should add Microsoft 365 channel. So for Teams, uh, we are using Microsoft Teams channel and for SharePoint framework, oh, sorry, not SharePoint framework, but for Viva Connections and for SharePoint, we are using Microsoft 365 channel. So this is the only change you need to do uh, to uh, allow your bot work in uh, Viva Connections. Now let's go to the code. And uh, first thing, as I mentioned, uh, you need to deploy the uh, Teams app to your SharePoint app catalog. So it's a similar thing as we uh, had before for Microsoft Teams. The only difference now in the manifest.json, we have new options for dashboard cards. 
where you actually uh, providing information about your uh, ACE. And here you basically have display name, description, icon. This is what you will see in the picker in your uh, Viva Connections dashboard. And then for the content source, you are using the bot ID, which is usually the same bot that you have in your existing Teams app. And that's how we communicate with the, uh, with the bot that you developed. And a uh, good thing here, Technically, you can have multiple uh, cards at the same time. So if for some reason you have multiple scenarios that are powered by the same bot, you can provide multiple uh, dashboard cards in the manifest. Now let's go to the code. So from code perspective, we provide SharePoint uh, activity handler. Again, it's pretty similar to uh, messaging extensions handler and uh, all the goodness that uh, Teams provide. This uh, uh, class is part of uh, bot framework itself. So if you go to NuGet package manager for .NET and install the latest version of uh, bot builder, or the same uh, is true for Node.js if you uh, install the latest uh, version from npm.js. Uh, .org, uh, you will see the SharePoint Activity Handler class that you uh, should extend, and uh, you can overwrite four methods in here to basically communicate with uh, our core, with uh, Viva Connections. The first method is uh, on SharePoint task get card view. Basically, this one uh, describes uh, the response when we want to uh, display the card view on the on the dashboard for the first time. So basically, when you add a new card uh, to the dashboard, you will see uh, we are sending th this request to the bot, and uh, it's up to you how to like respond to it. I'll show a quick example of the code here. Uh, and uh, all the, by the way, all the types, all the functionality is provided as part of uh, bot schema as well. So all the types, all the uh, code is like strongly typed, both for Node.js and uh, .NET. And the classes are really the same as you would expect from SharePoint framework. So when we are preparing the uh, card view, for example, we have uh, primary text card, we have card view parameters inside, uh, where you're just describing how you want your card bar to look, uh, that you want to have card text component inside, like a primary text or heading. Uh, you have uh, functionality to add um, uh, buttons uh, in your footer, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, again, you can provide different actions. It can be quick view actions, action that can, can be submit action, uh, upload media, et cetera, et cetera. So all the actions that are available for SharePoint framework uh, power tasks, they're available for bot power tasks as well. So as mentioned, uh, the first uh, method to override is uh, get card view for the card view. Same for get quick view uh, when uh, on the client side we uh, see that uh, the quick view action is executed by a user. We will send request to get card view uh, adaptive card uh, markup uh, that is completely uh, extensible. You can provide any information in there as you want. Another one is get property pane configuration. This is basically how uh, we configure the property pane when in edit mode. So again, it's not like some manifest thing or some uh, hard-coded thing for the uh, bot aces. You can actually provide all the properties for the uh, property pane as well. And again, the types are the same as you would expect from SharePoint framework. So we have a uh, property pane page, property pane group, and all the uh, fields like property pane uh, text field, uh, choices, uh, drop downs, et cetera, et cetera. Everything is available for bot power tasks as well. Uh, the next one is uh, set property pane configuration. This is when the uh, user clicks apply in the property pane and you want to uh, handle this as well to, for example, store it somehow, or maybe you want to update the view of the card, uh, you can uh, handle this as well. And the last one is handle action. Uh, this will be called for any submit, execute, uh, et cetera, et cetera, all these actions uh, that uh, are executed by the user, either through uh, buttons or selecting something on the card view itself. 
Uh, and from the code perspective, one more thing I want to uh, show uh, is the definitions for the uh, ACE request. So in the ACE request, you have uh, data that will be specific for different types of actions. So for example, for a quick view, you will be getting the ID of the view that uh, was part of the action. So in that case, you can have different quick views uh, for different actions or for different card views that are currently displayed. And uh, in the properties uh, property of the request, you will be always uh, getting the configured properties from the property pane. So in that case, uh, your bot can be kind of stateless. So you don't need to store all the properties uh, in some, I don't know, cache uh, on the back end. Instead of that, you're, you'll be getting all the properties uh, as part of the request. And uh, yeah, so basically that's all from technical perspective, from implementation perspective. You just need to extend uh, one single class, you should, uh, or not should, you can uh, implement five methods for uh, different types of uh, actions that will be sending uh, to the bot, and that's basically it. But one more thing that I want to show that, as mentioned, we are trying to simplify development uh, when you already have investments in your uh, Teams bots and you want to provide the same for the uh, Viva connections. And uh, usually it's hard to deal with different admins. So first you need to go to Teams admin and tell like, hey, you need to upload my uh, LOB application, for example, or ISV application in the Teams app catalog. Then you go you need to go to SharePoint admin and do the same to uh, make the application available in SharePoint. So we are aligning all that in one place. And uh, this is still in preview, so don't try to use it at home. <laughs> and uh, anyway, even if you upload the uh, app here, you will not see it in the dashboard yet. But I can basically use the same bot archive I used in the SharePoint app catalog. I will open it. The new app is added and I actually go, can go here. I have my Teams bot applied and uh, working in Teams. So for example, if I have some uh, static type personal apps in there uh, or actual bot, it will work in the Teams. And uh, when we are ready for our GA uh, somewhere in the next uh, year, the same uh, app package will be available in SharePoint and in Viva Connection. So basically you will not need to go to the SharePoint admin and upload the same package. If the package is deployed to Teams app catalog and Later in the team store, it will be available in Viva Connections. And uh, I believe that's all I have. Excellent. Thank you, Alex, on that one. Let me move uh, in here. Uh, so just as Alex, Alex called out, uh, so this is now coming pretty soon in preview. It's There's not yet tutorials available for you to get started, but we're super close on that. Uh, we're trying to get it in preview by end of this calendar year as a public preview. Um, and for now, we'll call out all of that um, steps to get started in the documentation. Uh, Paolo Pialorosi, by the way, will do a getting started session on Thursday this week related on uh, the setup as well and how to use Graph APIs and all of that within the bot powered uh, Viva connection uh, ACs. So some additional content there. Now, uh, if you're looking into getting started on uh, or understanding what the Viva connection is all about, here's the assets what we have available right now. Just to call out, we do not have yet uh, tutorial documentation on the bot powered ACs. All of that will be included in the Viva Connection documentation as it will be available for you. So this is, we're super close. Technically, technical situation is ready. We just need to get the documentations and guidance available for you uh, so that we don't need to answer all of the questions in the issue list. So that questions will be answered in the documentation. That's now the delay. But that's pretty much it. So and uh, here's the resources. Thank you, David, on uh, copy pasting those in the in the uh, chat as well for you to get started if you're looking into doing uh, uh, building stuff in the Viva connection. 
just to call out here as well, the bigger picture uh, in the screen uh, is actually showing the Viva Connection version 3.0 experience, which is a bit more modified uh, and it has additional capabilities like a hero section announcements and all of that stuff. All of this can be, can be also personalized and you can build those dedicated extensibilities using the dashboard cards within the Viva Connection site. Thank you.